same time we turn to comets. One trillion celestial balls of ice, dust, complex molecules left over from the birth of our solar system. If we look at the solar system today, it probably has a trillion comets in it still, a million, million comets. And those are just the leftovers. When the solar system was young, there were many, many more. We consider comets to be the leftover, the debris from solar system formation 4.6 billion years ago. That's very important because what we see today are two broad families of comets. Some live near the inner part of the solar system, around Jupiter, and between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars and the Earth, for example. But there are some which are much further away, stretching out all the way to the distance of, halfway to the distance of the nearest stars, perhaps. So after the cloud of dust and gas collapsed, and that formed the Sun, and then there was a protoplanetary disk from which the planets were formed, the asteroids and comets that we have now were the leftover debris. They were thrown and scattered among that disk. But by studying these different families of comets, we can hope to learn something about how they were formed, where they originated in the solar system, and where they got moved to later on by interacting with the planets. Of those bodies, comets are the most interesting, I believe, because they were thrown into deep freeze. So they had that primordial material encased within them. And by studying these bodies, we get a little view into history. They're a, a treasure chest with a view back in time. And we believe that what we observe here in our own solar system can provide clues to how the evolution proceeds in other solar systems, and perhaps even clues about how comets fall onto planets and bring water and maybe even life to alien planets light years away from where we live today.